Hey everybody, today Rado runs through the initiative. But before I begin, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goofs, you know what they are. And of course, I'm not Rado, I'm Shay Parker. I'm helping Rado cover even more games. Games like the initiative, or as my friends have been calling it, either the redacted initiative or the <laughs> initiative. Uh, now, this is a, uh, code, a cooperative code-breaking game, but it's also a game within a game. See, at the beginning of the game, because this is a story, like campaign kind of game, you will uh, get this guidebook and you will flip it open and you will see a little bit of a comic here. And what this is telling you is that we are playing as teens who have found a mysterious board game uh, at a garage sale, which may be something a little bit more sinister because there's this dude kind of watching us after we buy it. Now, the game that we are playing is called The Key, and it's a fairly straightforward game about uh, going around trying to find clues and cracking codes. Um, so what I'm, I have in front of me now is actually a sample game that the publishers have provided for uh, content creators because they don't want to give away any of the story that you're going to experience uh, through the campaign of this game. And I have played through it. It's very cool, but well, uh, stay tuned to the final thoughts for that. Now, what I'm doing, like I said, is a sample, um, but I've also got something that I'm, I'm keeping from you a little bit for now. See, I'm going to show you the basic gameplay for a few rounds, and then uh, after that, I'm going to introduce what is on this secret card right here. Uh, but before I do that, I'll let you know so that if you want to completely avoid spo spoilers, you can just head right to the final thoughts. Now. What we are going to be doing in this game is going uh, all around this little office uh, building that we've, um, you know, snuck into um, because uh, we are, as teens, playing a game where we are spies. So I'm playing as Pratna Saini, who's got a leadership ability. She can, you know, move people around. Um, a little bit like some pandemic uh, style abilities that you'll see in here. And Jenny Bradley, who is pretty good at picking up uh, these clue tokens that are on the board. Now, we're going to be going around and performing uh, four different main actions, which are in these piles over here. And the way that we're going to be performing them is by playing cards. Everyone has a hand of cards. And by the way, I've set up for a two-player game. This is also how you would play the game solo, uh, I think, if you want to do that. Um, but it goes up to four, and there are two other teens that you can play as. So. Um, each teen has their hand of cards, and these got uh, these have numbers from one to twelve, and three different suits: binoculars, briefcases, and walkie-talkies. Now, for now, these suits don't really mean anything, uh, but later on in the game, they do become a little bit more important. Uh, and so, every time I want to take an action, I will take one of these cards and play it on one of these action piles. And then for every future action, you need to play a card with a higher number. So it's good that I have a one here because if I want to move, I can just put that one on the run pile and then later on, I can still play any of these other ones. Like this three would be a good choice. Um, on your turn, you can do one or two actions. You have to do an action though, if you can. And uh, if you don't want to or can't do any of these actions, then you also have these personal actions, like I said. But instead of placing cards onto these action piles, you'll place them into the discard pile. And that's going to be important a little bit later. Now, the reason we are doing all of this is to pick up these clue tokens. And these clue tokens will have either symbols on them or they will have traps. And we don't necessarily know what they are. Uh, this setup has been determined by... Uh, the little map on the back of this clue card for my demo mission. And so this I've told us how all these things are set up. Um, but on this side, we've got a cipher. Uh, and it specifically is asking us something uh, that we're trying to figure out. So let me zoom into this so you can see. There are two number sequences below. That's these two things right here. Now, I'm trying to figure out what numbers are represented on these two glyphs, this Wi-Fi symbol and this cool E. Um, so I'm trying to figure out what is on these, uh, specifically under these little windows here. But those glyphs are not going to be found on the clue tokens down here. The other ones will, though. Um, however, not all of these clue tokens are going to be useful for this spe these specific glyphs. So, 
the best thing to do is to just jump in and try and figure some things out. Uh, you get to decide who uh, goes first based on pretty much what is in your hand. And that is, um, it's, this is one of those games where they kind of encourage you to not say exactly what's in your hand, but be a little bit like, you know, I've got low numbers, I've got high numbers, that kind of thing. And uh, you, I mean, it's like Pandemic. You can play that way. You don't have to. I, I like to because I think it's kind of fun. But again, I'm playing by myself, so I'm going to have open knowledge. Let's just say that Prathna is going to go first. So I've got my hand of cards, and I want to go somewhere. Let's say I want to... Uh, let's talk about what the, the main actions are. Obviously, you can move, which is the run action, move up to three rooms. Each of these rooms is sort of designated by these open doors, and some of them have been closed off. Um, I can uh, intel, which is I choose any room on the board, and I look at the top uh, two clue tokens on it. Sometimes that will activate traps. Um, sometimes it will, but it won't matter. Um, sometimes you'll, uh, you'll see glyphs, and if they are important ones, they stay on the board because you've just looked at them, you haven't gathered them yet. Um, but if they're not on the board, you can just get rid of them. And gather, which is you're collecting up to two clue, clue tokens from your room. And then there's regroup. Now, as, as we've seen, you know, I'm playing cards. And I'm going to start, let's say I start by uh, running. I'm going to do that low card on the run action. I'm going to go somewhere. And let's say I go, I want to go, you know, over here so that I can, we can spread out. So I'm going to go one, two, three. And these guys would be on stands, but, you know, it's top-down photography. So I want you to actually see these little portraits. So I've taken the run action. Um, and now... Let's say a lot of cards have been played on to run, and it's getting to, you know, 10 or 11 or 12. So it's really hard to play cards because you have to play a card higher. If you take the, regr the regroup action, you can take another discard pile and get all of the cards off of it and put in the discard. Sorry. You take all the cards from an action pile and put them in, a dis in the discard pile. So that will be useful later on. But for the first part of it, uh, the three other actions are going to be important. And so now I want to gather where I am. So I'm going to take my other lowest cards, little three here, and I'm going to put it on gather. So I get to collect two tokens from my rooms. There aren't, are only two tokens there, so I flip them over. Well, first one's a security camera. This is a trap, and I don't like it. Um, doesn't do anything immediately, but it will do something in a minute. And the next one is another trap. Oh no! So I have just triggered two traps in a row. I didn't plan for this. This is just how it worked out. Um, this little uh, gas cloud is going to force me to randomly discard a card from my hand. Um, I only have two left. I'm gonna take one of these cards and I discard a big high number. That's kind of okay. Uh, right now, I want lower numbers. So I'm okay with that. But the security camera, oh yeah, and then the gas cloud goes away. The security camera, however, is going to stick around for the rest of the game. And this, uh, specifically, what this does is if you end your turn in this location, that means you have to discard the top card of the, uh, of the draw pile. So just take that and throw that in the garbage as well. Now, once I get through all the cards in here, I'm going to take everything from the discard pile, shuffle it, make a new draw pile, but then I will be in peril. And if I, uh, once once I'm in peril, the game changes a little bit, but we'll talk about more about that once we get to it. So I have taken two actions, which is the amount that I wanted to do. That's the end of my turn, which is why I discard the top card from the uh, deck for the security camera. And now I have to draw back up to four cards. So I have one, so I will draw three more cards. I've got uh, pretty high numbers. We'll see how well I can work with that once uh, my turn comes around again. But now we pass it over to Jenny. Jenny has uh, decently low numbers. So we could start with uh, a little bit of movement. I think that would make sense. Might do the same thing, move and uh, do some gathering. Um, but I might work a little bit differently. I think instead of uh, doing just the normal move and gather, I'm going to run, placing the two on top of the one because it's a higher number. And I'm going to go down here. Now we've got this corner here, which has three rooms with only one uh, token on them. And that's not ideal because you can always grab two things at once. So it would be a little bit less efficient to use gather on this. 
Um, and in fact, I'm actually going to go down here. So what I'm going to do instead of, of one of these basic actions, I'm going to use my character's action. Again, this character's action deduction allows me to collect one clue token from my room and or uh, one adjacent room. So I can, instead of grabbing all of these and then moving and then grabbing these, I can grab both of these at the same time. But I need to discard two cards to do it. I think I'm going to take out this three and the seven. The three is potentially going to be a little bit too low for some of the things that I've got going on. And seven is the other highest card that I have. So I'm just going to throw those down. And so now I'm going to reveal these two tokens here. So I'll start with the one in the center. This is a symbol, but as you can see, it does not match uh, any of the symbols on my cipher. So I'll take that and just kind of throw it away. And then this one over here, ooh, another trap. This is a security camera, but I'm not in that room. So I will not suffer the consequences for it. Feeling good about that. But those were two actions for me, so I'm going to end my turn and draw three more cards and some more high numbers. We'll see how that fares for me in the future. Now it's passing it pass it back to Prathna. This is a place I want to get out of uh, as soon as I can. So I'm definitely going to move. Uh, unfortunately, I've got some pretty high numbers here, and that's not ideal. I'm going to throw down this six uh, to move up to three rooms. I'm just going to move one space over here. And now I have to ask myself, do I actually want to put down any of these cards? I could gather, but the lowest card I have is an eight. And that's really high uh, as far as this goes. So I think I'm actually just going to end my turn there. I've taken one action. I don't have to take a second if I don't want to. So I'm hoping that the next card I draw is going to be a lower number. But even if it isn't, I can potentially just something a little bit better, or, you know, I, I won't be taking up so much space if Jenny is able to put a higher number down on one of these. But let's see. Uh, ooh, yeah, much higher number. Not great for me. It's all right. Moving it back to Jenny. Jenny's in a similar situation, has kind of high-ish numbers, um, but uh, it'll be okay because we can use one of these eights. We're at six on movement, so that's kind of okay. And we're going to move into this corner, getting that last piece of the puzzle. Uh, well, it's not even the first piece of the puzzle, really, but um, we're going to do gather because we got a five here. That's not too bad. Um, so we're going to gather here. Now let's look at what we got. We've got a cute little face, but again, not one of the symbols that we need. And lastly, ooh, we got a trap, but this one's a little bit different. See, this is a counterintelligence trap, and these get triggered when you, uh, when you reveal them using Intel. However, we did not use Intel. We used Gather. So fortunately for us, this goes away. Now, if we had revealed it through Intel, what we would do is take this and cover up uh, the matching action pile. This is specifically blocking the Gather action. So we would be blocking that off. And until that got um, removed, no one would be able to take the Gather action but it gets removed through regroup. So um, it's, not, it's not debilitating, but it does hamper your, your uh, effects. Now I've uh, moved and I've gathered, so that is the end of my turn. I'll draw two cards. Ooh, we've got a pretty low one. That seems pretty good, but I am kind of stuck in the corner here. Luckily, when we move over to Prathla, I've got these really high cards and I don't really want to use them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my leadership ability. I've got two big cards, uh, so I'm just going to discard them. And now I can take any player on the board, with their permission, of course, and move them up to five spaces, ignoring uh, effects that restrict the run action. Now, we don't have any of those out just yet. I don't think we will in this game, but sometimes those do come up. So now I can move uh, Jenny here up to five spaces. I think we're going to go over here. Let's go one, two, three, four. Um, I could go all the way down here, but there's a reason I'm not, and I'll, I'll get to that in just a moment. So I'm doing that action, and again, I think that's all I'm going to do. I still have pretty high numbers. I could I could use this 8 to gather. You know what? I am, because we don't have anything yet, and we need to get something. So I'm going to use this 8 to gather in my room. Hopefully, we'll get something good. Oh my god! I'm hitting all of the traps. I, the good thing is, 
I don't think there's any more gas clouds after this. I think there's only two. There might be three, but gas cloud means I have to discard a card in my hand. There's only the one, so discarding that. And, uh, and then that goes away. And then the last one is another symbol, which, uh, again, is not one of the symbols that I need. I'm not in the best position right here, but we still have a lot of cards to go, so I think we're doing not not great, but we're not doing as horribly as we could be. Though, I don't know, we've hit almost every trap, so we'll see. Um, all right, so drawing up to four cards, because I've lost all of them. Ooh, much more manageable things. These are uh, a good spread of low to medium numbers. Early game, that is kind of what you want. But going back to Jenny. Now, I've got some highish numbers, uh, and that's not amazing, but there is a thing I can do with it. I'm going to throw down this 10 for gather. Now, I haven't done intel or regroup. I am going to do those in just a minute, but uh, first I want to gather because I just, we need, we need more tokens. We need to solve this puzzle. So let's see. First off, uh, another thing that's not part of this. Please give me something. Here we go. Okay. So this it is just on one of these little windows here, which means that once I've gathered this, it doesn't work when you do Intel, just when you gather, I get to flip this up. So now I see the number 42. Now, when I get more of these, I will hopefully be able to discern what kind of number sequence is going on. And it seems like there's two different number sequences. So I'm trying to figure out the Wi-Fi one and the E here. So, but that's my first clue that I've gotten. It's only taken like 10 turns to get there. Usually you get some things a little bit faster than this, but sometimes this is just how it works. Um, so that was my first action. And now we're at really high numbers up here. That's 10, that's gonna be really hard to gather. So I'm going to regroup. I have a one here, it's perfect timing to regroup my gather. So I'm going to take all of these cards and put them in the discard pile, which frees up the gather action. So now we can do much lower numbers there. So drawing two more cards and passing it over to Prathna. Now I've got some really low cards, which means uh, I would love to do something, but here's the thing, I can't move because the lowest, uh, the number on movement is eight and my highest card is a six, which means I'm not gonna be able to gather unless I regroup movement first. I might wanna do that, but then all I'd be able to do is regroup and then move. Not my favorite. So instead, I'm going to do Intel. I'll put down one of my twos for Intel, and now I'm choosing a room and revealing up to two clue tokens on it. This can be used to obviously figure out a place where you want to go next, but sometimes you can use it to, if you don't think that you're gonna find any, any clues, then you're almost using it to not block it off, what's the word? Uh, rule it out, exactly. So. I might look at this one all the way in the corner and think, well, if I can rule these things out, we don't need to go all the way over there. Or I can look at this one next to me and say, well, maybe if we find something here, that'll be good. That'll give me a direction for next turn. Or maybe I'll just be able to skip it. I think, I think I'm going to start over here. So I'm going to uh, Intel, which means I'm going to reveal both of these. And wouldn't you know it, both of them are uh, going to be useful for the cipher. So. I leave these up, and next turn, I know that I'm gonna to wanna to go there. Um, and that is that is decent for me. Again, I can't move though, so I think I'm going to regroup. I take this two, and now I'm gonna regroup movement. Let's grab all of these cards. Um, Jenny here. Now, Jenny could run over there and grab them, but it seems like, oh, first off, I need to refill my hand. Eh, decent little, Stretch cards, it's not too bad. Um, so yeah, I could uh, move over there and grab those, but again, Prata seems to be on that. So I'm gonna take these two, um, take these two medium cards. Sometimes it's good to have really high cards in your deck. Uh, so I'm gonna take these two medium high cards, discard them to use Jenny's ability, which is uh, gathering this one and one adjacent to me. So let's grab this one over here. And first in the room we're in, this is, uh, not gonna be for what we need, but let's see over here. Another security camera. Again, good thing that I did it with my ability because I'm not in that room, so I'm not suffering the penalties for the trap. But it does mean that if anyone wants to go there, if we want to get this 
a different piece of uh, this other clue, then that'll be a little bit more difficult. Not impossible, but a little bit more difficult. So I've done that, and I'm not sure what I'm going to do next. Maybe I'll intel. Um, I do have a three, so yeah, I'm going to intel. And now I need to pick a room to uh, flip two tokens. So I'm going to do this one in the corner here. And we've got, okay, so we've got one token that is going to be important, but we've also got a counter intel. This, unfortunately, is going to block off the run action. Because I revealed it using an intel action, we are now no longer able to run until we regroup the run action. That is not, uh, that is not good because regrouping um, is, uh, you know, it's, it's better when you have a lot of cards in that space. And we don't have any right here. So this is not going to be as efficient. Um, but uh, at this point, I kind of, I want to add in the thing that I've been keeping, uh, this secret here that's been here the whole time. I was hoping to get a few more, um, a few more of these flipped over before I do that. But I think it's important to, to show you what is going to go here. So now if you, this does not show up until a few missions into the campaign. So if you want to completely avoid spoilers, now is the time to flip over to the final thoughts. But otherwise, uh, if you want to stick around, you're going to see something a slightly more advanced bit of gameplay that we're going to uh, bring in. So uh, last chance to avoid spoilers. Three, two, one. All right. The secret here is an enemy. Specifically, this one is the mastermind. This mastermind it lives in this corner right here. That's where he was uh, supposed to start at the beginning of the game. Now, there are four different enemies in the game, and each of them act a little bit differently. This one specifically um, has a constant, um, a constant ability. That ability is tokens in the mastermind's room cannot be collected or revealed by players. So, as you can see, there's a big stack here. The reason I haven't been going for it is because I knew the mastermind was supposed to be here. There is a stack of four bits of intel here, but we cannot get to them no, so long as the mastermind is there. However, the mastermind is going to be moving. Now, some of these tokens that you'll see have had these little symbols on them. Whenever you uh, are revealing or gathering a token and you see one of these symbols, that will activate the mastermind's ability. In this case, he just moves one or two rooms towards the revealed token. So he will move he will move around and will stop us from gathering things. But for now, he is hanging out in this space. Now, the way that you uh, defeat enemies, because you can defeat them, is by discarding cards while you're in the space with uh, the mastermind that will get up to this number. And as you can see, there is the suit of briefcases. And this is why I didn't use my 12 of briefcases, uh, because we need to deal 19 damage worth of, uh, of briefcases um, to the mastermind. So if I can put this 12 down, that's going to be a lot. But I am not uh, there yet. Next turn, perhaps I will be. <clears throat> Uh, when you throw one of these cards down, it's sort of a free action. doesn't really count as one of your actions. Um, it's just a, a thing that you do on top of everything else. But you can only do it once per turn. So one player cannot you know, blitz uh, an enemy. You have to work together to do it. But anyway, end of my turn. Let's draw three more cards. Ooh, I've got another big briefcase. So could probably deal with it. Thing is, we got to deal with this run. Now, I, uh, Prathna, I could regroup. Uh, I definitely could do that. I could uh, regroup the run action. At some point, we are going to need to do that. But I really want to get these. I want to get these now, if we can. Um, and well, I do have I do have good numbers for it. So now this is where you would t talk to your uh, your teammates. Should I regroup now, just so we have the run, and get these? Because Prathna has her leadership ability. This is not technically running. This is her own ability that allows her to move either myself or another uh, another player. So I could sacrifice two cards to move one space. Doesn't feel good, but I would get these two tokens, and those would get us potentially on the right track towards actually figuring this out. Of course, of course I'm also looking at which um, which numbers these are. So these the those 
two tokens would specifically get these two uh, figures, which might be might be enough for me to figure out this this sequence. It would, potentially is a little bit difficult, but it could it could be done. Um, I, my friends and I have solved these puzzles with less. Um, we've also sometimes needed a lot more, so it's uh, it's tricky. Or I could use this fort, pretty low number. I could regroup just to get rid of the run, and I could get myself in position to get it next turn. As much as I want to get that right now, I think that's the better play. So I'm going to regroup, getting rid of the the counter intel, and then I don't have a good number. I would be throwing down a six at the lowest. That's kind of high. Maybe I'll just intel. Uh, I might just do a little bit bit of intel, maybe on this space or this one. I don't know. It's hard to say. Maybe I can block off this because if I well, yeah, I'll see what's over here. Because once I go here, I could theoretically double back and get that if I need to. So let's figure out if there's anything important over there. So I'm going to intel uh, that space. We've got a little snick that is important and uh, a little shieldy kind of thing. It's not, so we can just get rid of that. But each of these has a symbol on them. You see each of these has a little star uh, or a little half of a star. So each of them is going to affect the mastermind. Mastermind moves one room towards the revealed token, so Mastermind is going to go one, two. Now, this has actually helped us. We could go in and try and defeat the Mastermind, but right now, Mastermind's not anywhere that is important. So, uh, next turn, Jenny can just move right in here and hoover up some uh, some tokens. I think that's a pretty uh, good result of what I did. Um, again, this one can go away, but these are still on the board. We're going to need to pick them up. We've got a little bit of time, but we need to pick those up. So end of my turn, drawing two cards. And yeah, got some good medium numbers. I think that's a pretty decent position to be in. Passing it back over to Jenny. Now, here's the thing. I've got one four. That's the lowest number I have, and the other ones are really high. But that's okay, because here's my plan. I'm going to do a four on the run. It's low enough that I don't feel bad about it. I'm just going to go right here. And now I'm going to take my two highest numbers. Well, oh... That's the thing. I was wondering if I wanted to save these to fight the mastermind with. I definitely want to save the 12, but I think I can use the 7 and 11 and feel, you know, okay about that. I'm going to discard these and do my ability again to pick up one piece in my room and one piece over here. I know that this one is important, so I'm going to grab that one first. And looking back over here, this actually is covering two pieces right here. So flip up the uh, little pyramid, 28. Now, as you can see, the reason it's covering two is because it's the same number. If you ever see two things, like we've got this little flux capacitor right there, those we know are going to be the same number. But I'm also now looking, now I have two numbers side by side. I might, uh, if, if I can look at this uh, well enough, I might be able to say, what is the pattern here? Well, it's subtracting by 14. So I could think that, you know, this one might be 14 and then this one might be zero. That could be the, the sequence, in which case adding 14 would be 56 and then adding 14 again would be 70. So if I think that's how that's working, maybe this one's 70. If I get another one of these numbers that confirms that, I would feel pretty, pretty solid. Um, what I would love to get is this uh, flux capacitor thing. That would be really good. But... I've gotten some good uh, some good intel right now. Oh, but I also get to draw one more. Uh, that's the one that I'm in right now. This, though, is not um, one of the ones that I need. However, it is. Uh, it does have this blue symbol, which again moves the mastermind to towards the revealed symbol, which is back in my space. Luckily, I still have this 12 of briefcases. So I'm going to discard this and throw it, uh, put it underneath the mastermind. Now this doesn't go into the discard pile. It goes underneath the mastermind until the mastermind is defeated. And once that happens, all the cards underneath go into the discard pile. Um, and we're hoping that would happen before we run out of cards here, but I have to draw four cards right now and there's only one left, so we'll see. Uh, I have a one briefcase, so I'm not gonna be able to defeat this mastermind uh, next turn. And I don't think, well, yeah, I can't. Prothan can't do it either. 
because we need to get to 19. All I have is this four. So it's not going to happen right now, but in the future it will be. Now, what I need to do is I need to get those tokens. It's been too long. Um, so I'm going to run. Got that five going right there. Gets me into position. And now, oh, perfect. I have a, oh, Gather's got nothing on it. So I can do that four. Um, so I'm going to pick up both of these tokens and let's reveal what we've got. So for the Tetris block here, let's zoom in. Tetris block gets me, ooh, trying to prop this up, this thing, it makes perfect sense if you are playing in it and it kind of goes like this, but then, you know, you guys can't read it. So got my little makeshift prop up. Okay, so we have a zero. And because each, um, if there are multiples, oh, hey, there is a multiple down here. It's a zero. And that's what the, uh, that's a little Tetris block told me. Okay, so that is what I was thinking it was going to be. So I feel confident that I know what the bottom sequence is. It's uh, moving down from left to right in, um, in 14s. So I think, what did I say? I think I said 70. Yeah, I think this number is 70. And that's one of the ones I'm trying to figure out. Now the top number, uh, I'm not sure yet, but I do have one more token that I'm uh, flipping up. So let's grab this one. Flipping that up, that's a 35. So I don't have it just yet, but if we're following the same thing, maybe it's uh, going up by sevens. Let's see, 0, 7, 14, 21, 28, 35. Okay, I'm fairly confident about that now. Um, I've moved and I've gathered. I'm pretty sure I know what that is, but I, uh, because I'm not in danger just yet, I feel kind of okay. And I wanna show you, oops, I wanna show you one more thing about the game. I've just finished my turn, so I will draw a card. I'm only up to three right now, but I have drawn the last card in the draw pile, which means I am now going to take the discard pile, which is full of all of the cards we've played, but also it's full of, has these four watch uh, cards. These are all going to get shuffled in. So I'm gonna shuffle these up and I am also going to flip my discard pile, because now we are in peril. Um, we've gone through uh, our, our draw pile once, and we are going through it again, but now there are those watch cards in here. And if we ever draw those watch cards, we immediately discard them. And as you can see here, if there are three or more time cards in the discard pile, you lose the game. Now, losing the game when you're playing the campaign mode doesn't necessarily mean that you know you have to, you don't have to redo it you never have to redo missions in this game um but it does mean that the story might be a little bit different um you have the little campaign mode on the back of this guidebook and uh, uh i'm not going to show it to you because you know just trying to keep everything spoiler free so uh it, you know you you mark off whether you succeeded or lost in every uh for each mission that you do um so you don't necessarily you don't want to you don't want to lose missions and that means you don't want to draw the time cards but a thing has changed once you're in peril you no longer have to draw at the end of your turn and that means that you could end your turn with zero cards in your hand and if that happens once it gets to you you are not able to take an action and thus you don't have to do anything but and and sometimes that's what you want sometimes you know other players especially when you're playing this game with more players other players are in a more advantageous position and you think it's better for me to actually not do anything and not draw cards. And for now, I, I have three cards, but I know that I'm going to want to do some things and I wouldn't mind some lower cards. Uh, so I will draw one just to see. And ah, I didn't plan this again. I drew a time card. Uh, so that goes immediately into the discard pile. And again, I could keep drawing, but one of these time cards has two time symbols on it. So if I draw that, we immediately lose. I think it might be better for me to just not draw. So I'm, I'm going to not draw. I'm going to pass it back over to Jenny. Jenny can't um, pick anything up in here because the mastermind is in this space, and I don't have a strong enough briefcase to whack this guy over the head and knock him out. I could move and try and grab this one, or I could go up here. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a move action. You know, we're getting a little desperate, so I'm going to have to put a 9 onto this 5 for move. 
Um, and I'll go one, two, three, and I'm gonna do my ability. Um, yeah, one's not super helpful right now. Neither is the 12 of radios. So I'm gonna throw those down and I'm gonna do my ability again, uh, looking at these two uh, tokens. Um, I am in a bit of danger if I reveal another security camera. No, I, I've got three on the board. I think I don't think there's any more. Um, but anyway, I'm going to reveal uh, this one. Ooh, it's a cloud, and that would be bad. But I'm not in this room, so the cloud goes away. And this room was this room was rough. This room and this room both had a cloud and a, and a camera. Not good. Uh, but anyway, I've done that, and now I'm taking the one in my room, and this is not one of the tokens that I want. That's okay. I was kind of just doing that to see if I could get anything more, but we know what we want, which is right here. So I'm not going to draw a card. Um, oh, uh, which one did I draw? It was this one. Uh, this one has a star on it, which means you got to move the mastermind one space towards the revealed token. If I want to, next turn, I could potentially go back and get this, but I don't think we're even going to get there because now that it's Prothenus' turn, let's, well, Movement's a little bit harder. Let's use that 10 to go one, two, three. And we're going to gather. We've got, where is gather? It's up here, yeah. Uh, it's the lowest card I have is a seven, so I'm going to use the gather to pick up this little snake. Picking up the snake. Now, I'm thinking that this number is going to be 21. So if I, please, if I see a 21 here, I'm just going to guess. You can guess at any time. Um, yeah, it's 21. I think I've got it. So now I'm going to guess. I'm going to say that uh, I'm trying to figure out the little Wi-Fi one, the E. I think this is a 7. And I think this one is, what did I say, 70? Uh, 56, 70, yeah. That's what I think it is. So I'm declaring my guess. Uh, 7 and 70. If I'm wrong, I've lost it. But if I'm right, then I have won the game. Uh, and so, reveal. It's a 7. And... It's a 70, which means I've done it. I've cracked the code um, and I've figured out the cipher, which means that I've won the game. And sometimes if you're doing the um, doing the campaign mode, you'll get uh, to read an extra like page of the comic for having won. Um, usually you mark off whether you've won or not, and then you'll be able to go to the next chapter and get another little comic page uh, and see how it goes. But um, that, so that is an example of uh, one game of the initiative. Again, this is a sample mission, so I haven't given away any of the missions that you will play. But uh, if you want to hear my final thoughts and the final thoughts of uh, another guest that I'm pretty sure you are familiar with, um, then why don't you click on that button in the top right and head on over to the final thoughts. And I will see you folks there in three, two, one. Bye-bye.